Okay, so it's, um, it's I guess it's, uh, it's a Friday, so there's not so many of you here. Um, so before we start lecture, I thought I'd just show you this, um, this video. Um, so this is a, a combination of, of observations, mostly by satellite, and, um, and a computer model, and those observations have been incorporated into that model, of atmospheric aerosols. So um, last time we talked a little bit about how volcanic eruptions can affect climate through putting aerosols in the atmosphere, so things like sulfates, um, uh, and that acts as nucleation points for clouds, so it makes the clouds whiter, last longer, and affects the climate through albedo. So this is, uh, this is a map that's just basically showing the different sources of all of the, basically, aerosols into the atmosphere, so not just sulfates. So uh, one that you can see on here, the ones that are in kind of orange, so these are the kind of aerosols that are from rock dust. So um, you can see that large sources are from places uh, so like the, uh, the Sahara Desert, the desert in the middle of Australia, occasionally the um, Patagonian deserts uh, down in South America. And you see that these regions introduce a lot of particles into the atmosphere in the form of mineral dust. Okay? So that might have a slightly different chemistry and atmospheric residence time, so they stay in the atmosphere for different amounts of time compared to some of the other aerosols. Um, so the blue ones are little particles of sea salt that get blown up out of the ocean, and you can see that they're really dominating in regions of the, the, um, the planet that are really stormy. So the Southern Ocean, see the high North Atlantic, you're getting lots of sea salts coming associated with storms, being blown, blown up into the atmosphere, and those little water droplets, they dry, leaving just the salt behind, and then that salt blows around in the atmosphere and can act as a nucleation point for, for clouds. Uh, later on. Uh, the other two ones are the green ones, and that's uh, emissions from the biosphere. So this is a combination of uh, biomass burning, so people taking a forest and burning it and so they can grow their crops, but also from um, uh, just trees and plants naturally give off a bunch of chemicals as they kind of grow and as they maybe, as they die and, and, and decay, they give off a bunch of chemicals. Um, so we'll come on to some of these in the, the biogeochemistry um, lectures, but things like dimethyl, dimethyl sulfide are emitted from trees and they end up forming cloud condensation nuclei. So there's a, a link between the biosphere and the climate through this kind of aerosol feedback as well. And then the last class of, of aerosols are the white ones on here. So these are sulfates. So these are largely sourced from industry. So you can see that large areas over Europe are giving off these white uh, aerosols over um, Eastern Asia and China are giving off these aerosols. Um, so that's the dominant source of these, these particles at the moment. So it's effectively like our industrial activity is constantly pumping out volcanic eruptions into the atmosphere that's acting to cool the climate. You can just about make out, uh, you see this little white splodge here, okay, so this, that's a volcano that's going off in the uh, East African Rift Valley. I don't know exactly which one. Um, I could make up a volcano name, and I'm sure you'd believe me, just like you believed me with the Philippines the other day. Um, anyway, so that just, just to show you that there are all these different sources of aerosols, and they're going to have an impact on the climate through this radiative feedback uh, effect um, through cloud whitening, okay? So, 